Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper and in this video I'm going to introduce a brand new piece of test equipment here on the Comms Prepper channel and that's a vector signal generator, the VSG25A by Signal Hound. This is a USB signal generator. It'll create RF signals from 100 megahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. Now unlike a tracking generator, with a vector signal generator you can actually modulate the signal. So in this video we're going to demonstrate how I can use this vector signal generator to test the receive sensitivity of this ICOM ICV80 handheld radio. But before we do the test I want to talk about some of the things up here I have on the bench. I've been a radio tech for 25 years and I've been off the bench now for probably 10 and I kind of took for granted having test equipment that the company provided. Specifically, the most popular piece of test equipment you can have as a radio tech is what they call a communication service monitor, or we call them just service monitors. And a communication service monitor bundles a bunch of different pieces of test equipment into a single box. You'll have a signal generator, you'll have maybe a spectrum analyzer, but at least a receiver that can check output power, uh, frequency accuracy or error, and modulation level. There's some basic tests you do when you get a radio in. If I were to get this radio in broken, I would check the transmit output power on a watt meter with a dummy load. Then I would want to check to see if it was actually transmitting on the frequency that's in the display, frequency accuracy. And then I'd want to check the modulation level to make sure I wasn't over modulating or under modulating or causing interference on the nearby guard space channels or an actual other channel. And then I'd want to check the receiver sensitivity to see if the receiver actually meets the specifications published by the manufacturer. I don't have a service monitor and with the magic of editing I'm going to insert some pictures of what service monitors look like and what they're going for used on eBay. And the ones I'm going to show you used on eBay are 20-25 years old and it's still hard to touch one for less than $2,000. It's pretty cost prohibitive and you really don't know the history of that unit, especially something that's 10, 15, 20 years old. You don't know how it's been abused, thrown around in a truck. And for a while I've been looking to get a service monitor and then I realized all these nice components put out by SignalHound are really helping me build a service monitor. With this vector signal generator I can test receive sensitivity. With the USB SA44B spectrum analyzer, you've seen this before on the channel, I can check frequency accuracy, I can check deviation level, I can also use this for a lot of other things. You see me look at the radio bands to see if there's repeaters out there, to see if there's any interference and just get a good idea of what kind of RF environment I'm operating in. And the more fancy or complicated service monitors also have a tracking generator that allows you to test antennas, tune duplexers, tune cavities and filters and that's where this tracking generator comes in. So between these three units, which are brand new, brand new new technology, software defined units that hook up to your USB port, I've essentially assembled a brand new communication service monitor for under $2,000. Now it's taken some time, so if you're actually looking to build up some test equipment to support a emergency communications plan or emergency group, you can actually add little by little as you can afford to do it. So in this video we're going to demonstrate how to use this specific piece of equipment here, the vector signal generator, how to test the receive sensitivity of a handheld radio. Now when I get this all set up I'll show you how I'm going to do it then I'll cut over to the desktop here so you can actually see this on the screen. We're not going to use these two pieces here in this video but the test we are going to use, the vector signal generator, this has an output power of negative 40 dB to I believe plus 10. This will not go low enough to test the sensitivity of this handheld. So for 25 bucks used on eBay, I was able to buy a step attenuator. And this will give me 10 dB steps here on the side from 0 to 120 dB. So what I'm going to do is come out of the signal generator into here, set this to neg 80, and then I'll adjust the level here on the vector signal generator to get to the desired level to test the actual handheld radio off of this port here. Then I will couple the audio out of the side of the handheld, run it through the microphone jack in the computer, and show you a really cool program put out by ComTech, and I'll put a link down below, to test sign or signal-to-noise ratio. 
So the specification, and I'll put an insert here on the video, typically is calling for NEG12 dB cyanide to be an acceptable receiver sensitivity. So we'll take the RF, come out of here, into the attenuator, into the radio, out of the audio port, into the computer, and create a loop, and check the receiver sensitivity to make sure it meets ICOM specifications. So let me pause the camera here, get this all set up, and we'll roll over to the desktop. Okay, we got everything cabled up. USB cable down to the computer, to the signal generator. This RF cable connects to one side of the step attenuator. The step attenuator is set to 80 dB of attenuation. I come out of the step attenuator and that comes into the top of the radio. The output or the audio or speaker jack on the side of the radio is going down to the microphone jack, the input on the computer, creating the loop. What I'll do is I'll generate the signal here it will come into the radio and we'll be able to measure the signal to noise ratio on the Comtech software. So now we'll roll over to the desktop capture software and show you the magic. Alright, we've got our desktop capture software running here. We have our two programs. On the right we have Comtech's Synad program. In the Synad mode we can actually toggle through the different modes here, but this is the mode we're going to use. On the left we have SignalHound's Vector Signal Generator software. This is driving the actual unit through the USB port. So the first thing we're going to do is configure this program here. We're testing an FM radio, so we're going to select FM as our modulation type. This NEG80 is out of the scope of the Vector Signal Generator, so we're going to go ahead and set that a little bit high to NEG40. We're going to set our radio's frequency here, so it's 146. 0.420 megahertz. Now the Comtech software is looking for a 1 kilohertz tone as its reference. You can see there's a little line running up here on the spectrum. So we're going to modulate or transmit a 1 kilohertz tone because that's what this program is looking for so that's what we're going to send to the radio. This radio is a 25 kilohertz or wideband radio so the deviation level is 5 kilohertz. I like to go in a little bit lower at around 4.8. That's just something I did when I started out in radio to make sure if the radio's frequency drifted above or below what the dial said you didn't cause any interference in the guard channel space or even on an adjacent channel. It just kept a little bit tighter in case the radio drifted off frequency. With newer radios that's less of a problem than it was 25 years ago. So that's our modulation level. We're going to turn the modulation on, we're going to turn the RF on, and I'll turn the volume up on the radio now. We're going to apply the presets, I'm sorry. And there we have it. Let me turn this down, I'm coming in a little high. We're getting our signal into the radio, right here, that one kilohertz tone. And the meter is measuring the difference between the noise and the signal and giving you a reading here the static here and that signal. So we're actually coming in a little high for the spec. The spec wants neg 124 dB. So we're going to set this up here to neg 44 dB. We also have the 80 dB of attenuation on the step attenuator giving us that 124. So let's apply the setting. And there we have it. We're bouncing up here and just touching from time to time the 12 dB sign add. We'll go ahead and increase the volume a little bit or turn it down. And again, this is not going to be 100% because we're using software and a cable and a computer, but that's pretty much dead on, right? I'll insert the specifications when I edit this video of the dB level versus microvolts conversion chart and the specifications from ICOM. But this is a great demonstration to show that you don't necessarily have to spend a boatload of money on a communication service monitor to test a piece of equipment with the different options that SignalHound has between the spectrum analyzer, the tracking generator, and now this vector signal generator, I can hit all the high notes of checking out a radio. Transmit accuracy, modulation, receive sensitivity, and with a watt meter I can do power out. So this has been a great test. It's working out really well. I'm really impressed with the vector signal generator by SignalHound and I'm also very impressed with Comtech's Synad software and I'll put a link down below to this as well because I was actually looking at buying an old school Synad meter off of eBay and they were selling for around a hundred bucks. 
So now that I have this software, this allows me to check out the specs of the radio. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper demonstrating how you can use Signal Hound's vector signal generator to test the receive sensitivity of a handheld radio. Thanks for watching, guys.